Hey guys, it's Ross going on the Space Coach today. We're going to talk about whether or not Finn could be force sensitive. So while Rey is clearly very strong in the force and will no doubt become a Jedi, could Finn also have some ability? There are some hints and clues that possibly he could. So why don't we have a look at them? Now, first and foremost, of course, is he breaks his conditioning. How is that possible? It's the first time that has ever happened in this universe. A stormtrooper has turned against his conditioning. Now, in the film, there were a couple of shots where it seemed like um, his consciousness was being expanded. You know, like the camera angle kind of went a bit strange and it was almost like blinkers were coming off of him as he suddenly realised where he was and what was happening. Obviously, the death of uh, Slip, uh, FN 2003, who leaves a bloody handprint on his helmet, that greatly affects him. Because um, obviously Finn is full of empathy and compassion. <laughs> a bit more Jedi traits than the First Order ones. Also, you know how when he's breaking out Poe, I know he says it's the right thing to do, even though he really means he needs a pilot, but it is the right thing to do. That is something that we do see Finn doing across the course of the film, is eventually sometimes he steps up and does the right thing. Um, Poe also sees something in uh, him that makes him trust Finn. In the book it talks about um, something in his manner, his bearing, his look. And as I think I said in the previous video, there's that line, throw in your lot with this one and you won't be sorry that you did. Um, he has that ability to inspire trust and confidence from others. Obviously, um, he was leader of his own fire team and that unit had a lot of trust and faith in him. And that was misplaced, obviously. Now, in the book also, Poe does see this spark of individualism in Finn. It's actually, it's just before he names him that. He's wondering, how can I keep this going? And by giving him his name, that is how he does that. Um, he also quickly figures out the gun controls, both on that Special Forces TIE Fighter and later on the Millennium Falcon, very quickly. I know he's trained with blasters and stuff, as a Gropo would be. Um, he even says, I think, to um, Poe, uh, can you just run through that again? But no, picks up very quickly. Could perhaps be some force sensitivity there. You never know. He also turns on the First Order at that point, you know, blasts the whole docking bay. Um, also, after the crash landing, managing to hike through the desert to the only town that's probably within hundreds of miles now. I know they talk about the will of the force when they want to just um, skate over perhaps a plot hole, but it could indeed be the force pushing Finn across the desert towards the outpost where he meets Ray and BB-8. When he does, of course, he quickly manages to establish trust with both Ray and BB-8. And in fact, the visual dictionary uh, that accompanies the film states that it is um, Ray and Finn's adventures and escape from Jakku that is the centre of this disturbance in the Force, the awakening that's mentioned in the title. Um, when they're at... Uh, Maza's castle on Takadana. I've mentioned previously that I see your eyes line. It just carries too much weight to it to just be like a a throwaway line, you know. And obviously, in the book, it says after that uh, I you have worries eyes, and that made it seem much more balanced. That, that is his path that he's following. I mean, who knows what Mars sees when she looks through those goggles? I mean, she knows the force. Uh, I think they filmed a scene, or that probably be the deleted scenes, where she brings the um, the tunnel wall down on a bunch of stormtroopers by using the force. So she's not a Jedi; she can use the force. She's force sensitive. Um, she also gives Finn the lightsaber. You know, not Han, not Chewie, her boyfriend. She gives it to Finn. This is after she said, she said, oh yeah, hook up with those, those guys, now go away. And then, <laughs> you know, well, he comes back because Ray has also decided to try and uh, avoid her destiny after she has her lightsaber uh, vision. She says, I'm not touching that again, stay away from you, whatever the words were. And she runs out as well. So it's interesting that both Finn and Ray's um, arcs are very similar at many points. It's just Ray's has once been revealed she's definitely a Jedi. Um, about Takadana, one of the main pieces of evidence for Finn possibly being 
force sensitive is that he does indeed appear to hear the screams of Hosnian Prime when it gets destroyed or just as it's about to get destroyed by the First Order. Very interesting sequence. He looks up, he hears it. When it then cuts to the next scene, there's a much lower level of hubbub, you know, and commotion. People don't realise what's happened. Finn is the one who has um, found out, as it were, and he comes dashing and says, it was the First Order that destroyed the New Republic. But, I mean, yes, that is possibly one of the biggest things. I didn't catch it the first time I saw the film. It was something I'd read in comments after seeing it and I looked out for the second viewing. When Finn turns and looks up at the sky, he hears the screams from Hosni and Prime or the screams are playing in the soundtrack. We assume that Finn is hearing them. Then it cuts the cantina scene and it doesn't have that level of tension. So yes, that's one of the main things to why Finn could be force sensitive. Also, the, the lightsaber rules are unclear now in Star Wars. It was always the case um, prior to prequels that uh, lightsaber is a Jedi's weapon. Only a Jedi would ever use it or know how to or be able to build one. That's changed because obviously, I mean, Han slices open a tauntaun. That's the only time we see him doing that. Uh, General Grievous wields lightsabers. Um, uh, although is he, he is kind of force sensitive, I guess. We don't know. Does Finn wielding the lightsaber mean something like that? I mean, I know he gets beaten both times, but bear in mind, in those fights, he does improve. I mean, yeah, he gets his ass handed to him by the TR-8 stormtrooper, but even an injured Kylo Ren is a much bigger opponent and threat than that guy ever was. And Finn manages to land a couple of blows on him. You know, I know he still gets beaten, but he has improved. And that's the thing about this new film. The Force is accelerating things, obviously. Rey's um, abilities, they come very quickly. And she basically wants to say, oh, the Force. So that's what it is. Ah, so I can probably do this then. It's very much so. That's one of the things I really enjoyed. That's also... I think new force rules, like how Finn says, we'll use the force, and Han says, that's not how the force works. Is it though? We've seen the force doing things we haven't seen before. Holding that um, blaster bolt that Poe fires at the beginning. Um, extracting information from people using the force. I don't know, perhaps it is indeed like that. We shall see. Another big um, possible hint is when, at that initial battle on Jakku with the stormtroopers, where Kylo Ren stops turns and looks at FN-2187. Very, yes, they don't explain it, because like, later on, when they realise someone's broken out Poe Dameron, said, it's him, you know? So he'd already noticed him. How and why had he noticed him? Obviously, he had just refused to fight on the villages. That could indeed be that disturbance in the Force. Um, I will just say, in the, Before the Awakening, the novelisation that precedes the film, Finn's established as a top, top storm crew, uh, Stormtrooper cadet uh, in the top 1% of everything. You know, he's great with blasters, he's good in combat with the Mason right control baton and all that sort of stuff. Now, in the old canon of all the books or whatever, was often the case that students who were at the very top percentile in their various academies or whatever, had force sensitivity or was suspected that they might, that's why they're at the top. And they were sometimes were abducted, turned to the dark side, picked up by the Jedi, whatever, all that sort of thing. So his high rankings could perhaps be another indication of his force sensitivity. I will just say his character traits, also very Jedi-like, you know, he's brave, compassionate, loyal, dutiful. Uh, obviously those uh, traits are all completely abused by the First Order and his trust in them completely uh, misplaced. Obviously it's great that he breaks away from them. The, uh, just also about the old canon, I believe there was a stormtrooper who defected and became a Jedi in one of the times. I don't recall which one. It was something I read in one of the articles. And there was also was a character called Finn previously. I think it's Finn Galfridian. I think he also became a Jedi. So maybe they're using some of these elements from the old canon that is now totally discounted to help build a story for the, um, the new universe. Also, the Force, it's also always had, say, principal and lesser users and senses. So you've got, like, say, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, you know, but then you would have, say, Princess Leia, who, I mean, she has that ability too, but, I mean, she's not a Jedi. 
as such or at all she obviously she senses when Han dies and in Empire Strikes Back she can sense Luke underneath uh, Cloud City I think those are possibly the only times that um, Leia has some force sensitivity I'm not sure I could be mistaken on that so uh, also lesser force user would be Mars as well in this new film as she understands the force and there's that scene we haven't seen where she uses it so if Rey is a strong force user then the other one could indeed be Finn as uh, you know the other or the another I think as they say in the uh, original trilogy it certainly would be great if Finn did become a Je well, for sense of doesn't necessarily have to be a Jedi, he looked fantastic with that lightsaber. I really hope we get to see him wielding a lightsaber in the follow-up movies, preferably his own. The fact that he is now unconscious, so he could be like lost in the Force. Um, who knows? So it'd be a great opportunity for him to be having some Force visions. First movie, that's setting Rey up as a Jedi. Uh, second movie, you know, they could start showing perhaps that if the Force has awakened, it is awakening in various places. One of those other places that could be awakening is Poe Dameron, who I'll do a quick video on to see if he has any potential Force sensitivity. But I do think Finn, it's possible, definitely. They've left it so ambiguous and some of the things that you can't just say that and it doesn't mean anything. You know, it might just not mean anything. He might just be a stormtrooper who defects and that's all there is to it. The first time it's ever happened in this universe, when even Leia says to him, like, what a brave thing it was. And it's pretty revolutionary, I guess. Let's hope that some more of that is explained in the follow-up films. As I said in previous video, episode 8, rewrites are going on. Finn and Rey's roles are being enlarged, apparently. Maybe they'll be getting into this. Anyway guys, that was just my thoughts on whether or not Finn could be force sensitive. I really hope he is. He deserves to be force sensitive. I think it could be a case in this new universe that, um, you know, the force, it's always around us, surrounding us, binding us, guiding us, all that sort of thing. Perhaps the force can indeed latch onto certain people and direct their actions at the will of the force, as I say. Maybe the force will move through Finn as well as through Rey. We can only hope. Please subscribe to my video if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or a suggestion what you think of if there's any other possible Force users out there. Or like the video.